Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And we're gonna be talking about PRP used to help patients with traumatic scars. Uh, so in this study that Don's gonna be talking about, the researchers compared the effects of platelet-rich plasma mixed with fat grafts uh, versus patients who had their scars treated with a fractional resurfacing laser uh, versus patients that received the laser treatment and the PRP treatment. So there's three groups. Um, Don, can you explain a bit more about this study? Yes. So the study consisted of 60 patients, and all of these patients had very traumatic scars, and they were either on the face, the legs, the arms, or the abdomen. Um, and they split the, the group, they split the 60 patients into three groups. Um, so the first group received two treatments of fat grafts mixed with PRP. The second group received four sessions of laser treatment. And the third group received actually a combination of both. So there were four sessions of laser treatment in addition to treat two treatments of the graft and PRP. Got it. Um, so actually, just to dive into the results, yeah. it showed that the most effective scar treatment was found in group three right. that received the laser and fat graft slash PRP mixture. mixture. Okay. Um, so this is actually really makes sense biologically uh, because, so you have to think about the healing process. So when platelets, like those contained in PRP, yeah. are activated, they begin secreting 16 different types of proteins, also known as growth factors, mm -hmm. uh, thought to accelerate the healing process. And 95% of those proteins are secreted within the first hour Got it. Ac after activation. Um, so in this study, the authors used um, something called thrombin in order mm. to activate the platelets. Right. And so this allows the platelets to be activated, but not to start um, like coagulating together. Right. So they're, they're still able to spread around right. and secrete their growth factors. Right. So thrombin acts both as an anticoagulant for the platelet-rich plasma serum, and then also as a way to activate the platelets exactly. to uh, stimulate their growth factor production. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so they added they added the thrombin to mm -hmm. PRP before mixing it in with the adipose tissue. Right. Um, so this was all mixed together, um, and after I I think right after ten minutes they actually injected the mixture right. into the body. Right. Yeah. So. And, and something that's worth pointing out, uh, in this study they actually mention the type of PRP kit that the researchers used. Uh, it was a kit called Regen Kit, uh, made by a company called Regen Labs. Um, and these are really some of the, the most affordable PRP kits on the market, and I believe they're also among the worst. And, and the reason I say that is there was a third party lab analysis that was done in 2016 uh, by a company called Biosciences Research Associates. Uh, the lead um, researcher on this project was Robert Mondel, um, and this is done in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So this was done four years after the, the study that we're talking about mm -hmm. with the skin, uh, the, the traumatic scars. But, but this third party analysis showed that these Regen kits um, actually produce very low quality PRP serum. Uh, in fact, the, the quote unquote PRP that a Regen kit produces has about half the platelet concentration of whole blood. Okay, so it's not actually platelet rich plasma, even though the, the researchers in this study thought it was. Um, it's something different. It's, mm -hmm. it's more like platelet poor plasma, actually. Um, however, However, that could still contain growth factors. It would, and, and even if you had less platelets when you activated the platelets with the thrombin, mm -hmm. you'd still have way more growth factors than baseline exactly. blood levels. Exactly, so um, getting back to the study, mm -hmm. so the researchers allowed, um, uh, allowed seven days to pass, actually, between the PRP and adipose tissue or fat graft treatment and uh, this uh, laser treatment that they did afterwards. And this is because it's thought that um, the platelets only will, their lifespan is around seven days. And during this time, the platelets are producing and secreting these growth factors in order to stimulate the growth of cells like fibroblasts. Mm -hmm. um, so after seven days, uh, they did a laser treatment on these traumatic scars. And um, so the laser actually will create tiny little columns of coagulated tissue um, along the, basically along the line of the scar. 
Um, and so this, this will uh, allow for re-epithelialization of... Re-epithelialization. <laughs> yes. Great word. Uh, yeah, so basically that just means that new tissue forms right. over that. And um, so this encourages the fibroblast and um, uh, the other various cells in the extracellular matrix to actually become more organized and to form uh, like a flat sheet rather than uh, sort of, you've seen keloids and things like that before. Right, so you're saying the resurfacing laser uh, produces sort of like a better substrate for the, the growth factors to then produce? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Okay. So, so you have these new cells that um, are migrating to there and they don't really know where to go. Uh -huh. So the laser goes in and creates uh, these like very um, uniform channels oh, sort okay. of in there. And then so they migrate to those channels. Got it. And then so then they can start, um, uh, I guess, reorganizing the whole, the whole extracellular matrix of right. the tissue. Got it. And um, also, uh, the researchers think that this allows uh, repigmentation mm -hmm. of the scars. Right. Uh, by recruiting melanocytes through these channels. Right. So basically melanin can get up uh, through the channels and up to the surface of the skin. It's sort of hypothetical. Right. But yeah. But it has been shown, PRP has been shown in vitro to recruit melanocytes. Got it. So. So, the, and the interesting thing in this study, I believe this was where they had taken photographs of before and after the, the treatment and the the dermatologists that were reviewing the photographs were totally blinded. So yeah. they hadn't seen if the patient ever received the fat grafts in PRP or just the laser or both. And the results were statistically significant exactly. in, in favor of the PRP uh, fat grafts and the laser. That, that's where we saw the best outcomes. Exactly, even if they may not have gotten as many platelets in their final count with right. this kid as they thought. Right, I mean, that's, that's a good point, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, that's why you'll see these clinics using these kits that are less effective, and it's it's primarily these gel-based separation kits um, that are less effective, but clinics are still seeing outcomes. And it's it's not just a placebo, it's just there's things going on beyond just having a, a, a platelet-rich plasma. Exactly, and don't forget there were uh, fat grafts added to it That's as true. well. That's which true, that's true. do have adipose stem cells in there that yeah. can differentiate into other cells. Absolutely. So there are lots of other factors going on. Yeah. yeah. All right, Don, well, thank you for helping break down this study. Uh, we're gonna have uh, some more videos in just a few minutes here about more research on PRP.